dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Richard Long in The Magic Darkness, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you very much, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where all the famous names on the motion picture theater marquees Join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is the popular young actor Richard Long in the title of our dramatic and exciting story, The Magic Darkness. In our story, we find a chemist in search of new elements and discovers that there is one immutable law in chemistry that can apply also to romance. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here is your announcer with this important message. Army doctors work side by side with top specialists in military and civilian medicine. Army doctors find opportunity for advanced professional training. Army doctors may request overseas duty and acquire breadth of professional vision by study and observation in foreign countries. Army doctors receive good pay, allowances, and retirement benefits. The Army Medical Department now has assignments for a limited number of young doctors. Get details by writing the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington, 25, D.C. And now, once again, our producer. Act One of The Magic Darkness, starring Richard Long. All too often, we of laity are prone to forget that the men of science are human beings, and that, like ourselves, their greatest thoughts are often bound to the feelings of their hearts. Pasteur, Lister, Renault, Franklin. These giants in the world of medical research are to us cold, precise, calculating machines. We never consider them in the commonplace of everyday things, of warm little emotions, of the capability of making the same mistakes we make, of possessing a heart that thrills to the music of a symphony, of mowing a lawn, or cutting their faces while shaving. Our story today deals not so much with the technical ability of the young scientist, Neil Wilson, as it does with his heart, or his soul, if you please, and the woman who saw in him the power to give life to a stricken world. As our play begins, this young scientist is rushing to the hospital where Professor Perot, his superior at the university, has undergone a radical emergency operation. Dr. Kennedy. Am I in time? I'm sorry, Neil. Terribly sorry. He died? There was nothing we could do. We were helpless. Perot dead. Uh, he was a great research chemist. One of the great scientific minds of the world. What was he currently working on? Oh, uh, a favorite theory of his. He, he had an idea that there's an unknown vitamin which stimulates the coagulation of blood. He called it the coagulation factor. Oh? Then he was still chasing that rainbow. He said if we could isolate it, it could be used to prevent post-operative hemorrhages. And... Perot and I used to argue about that. Neil, we already know every factor involved in blood coagulation. You don't have to take my word for it. It was proved at John Hopkins back in 1915. I know. As far as hemorrhages are concerned, there's nothing more we can do. In fact... Perot died as the result of a post-operative hemorrhage. That's the real tragedy. He died because the world lacked the, the very thing he was searching for. Come in. Thank you. Oh, Diane. Hello, dear. I hate to keep disturbing you, darling. I know you're busy. Diane, that is a malicious understatement. Oh, as soon as we get these wedding details set, I promise never to bother you again. It's not you, dear. I love seeing you. It's just that taking Perot's place has me worried. Tonight I'm going to get busy on... Oh, you can't work tonight. We're going to the Ferguson's for dinner and bridge. 
After all, Mr. Ferguson is one of the trustees. Diane, nobody wants to play bridge with me. Boy, I can't even keep my mind on the game. They deal me a grand slam and I'll bid two test tombs. Besides, I've told you how important this work is. The most important thing for you right now is to cultivate the trustees. The man I marry is going to be a success. Naturally, I hated to see Dr. Perot die, but it was a break for you because... Break? Diane, don't you realize what Perot's death means? Oh, I shouldn't have said that, I know, but it just popped out. And... Neil, you're not going to be angry with me. No, no, it's all right. Love me? Of course. How much? As much as I possibly can. Look, we have a whole hour before we go trustee cultivating. And there's some things I want to get over at the old lab. All right, dear, but hurry. Hello. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Wilson, you frightened me. Do I know you? I'm Claire Webster. Claire Webster. When I was about six years old, I was crazy about a little girl named Claire. Used to bite her all the time. <laughs> Well, if you ever bit me, you'd remember it. I don't want to seem nosy, but what are you doing in an abandoned laboratory at this hour? I was working. Working? Yes. You see, after graduating from here a few years ago, I went to the coast to do experimental work, but Professor Perot sent for me and... Of course, that's where I saw you, in his office. When he died, I started to go back, but... Oh, I don't know. I had begun some experiments here, and... Well, maybe you can help me. You see... I'm trying to carry on Professor Perot's experiments with blood coagulation and... Oh, then he told you about that. Oh, yes. And he spoke of you so often, too. He said that someday you would take his place. I doubt it. See, I don't have a beard. If you went to the movies, you'd know you can't be a great scientist without a beard. You liked him, didn't you? I loved him. <laughs> I remember the day he was taken ill. He was stomping up and down the floor, saying to me, there's no reason why people should bleed to death after an operation. Find it, find it. Find the coagulation factor and save them. Keep on searching. If that unknown vitamin could be isolated, we could stop fatal bleeding almost entirely. Oh, yes. People who haven't a chance of pulling through an operation now would be safe. And, <laughs> great Scott, <laughs> what am I doing? I didn't mean to deliver an oration. Oh, I've enjoyed every minute of it. You make it so it's exciting. Do I? You're very strange, Miss Webster. You mean I'm peculiar? No, no, I... I mean... Well, I'm afraid the average man's idea of a, of a woman research worker isn't exactly... Well... Isn't exactly what? Well, what I mean to say is... I don't expect to see a woman as a track... Anyway, not in a laboratory at this time of night. And Good Lord, what time is it? Yeah, uh, ten o'clock. Ten? Uh-oh. Well, maybe I can think up a good excuse on the way. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I've spoiled your evening. How would you like to spoil tomorrow evening, too? Tomorrow evening? I made a promise to Perot. And now I'm making one to myself. I won't stop until I've completed his work. And you need an assistant? I'll tell you in the morning. If I'm as late as I think I am, I may need a nurse. Good evening, Miss Webster. Oh, I've been waiting for you. I came here as soon as I got your call. Do you mind if I pull these shades down? After all, this lab's supposed to be deserted. Well, why all the mystery? Well, you see, I was supposed to play bridge again tonight. But unfortunately, I'm ill and confined to my bed. Oh. I uh, hope I'll get better, but I'm afraid it'll be a lingering illness. Ready to start work? Sure. Oh, what do you have there in that centrifuge? Oh. Oh, uh, will you write this down, please, while I start the machine? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm ready. Search for chemical solvent, January 18th. Test number one, solution of salt. And so, Neil and Claire begin the task. Trial and error. Error and then trial again. Emotions, hunger, comfort, time. All these cease to exist. All these bow before the brutal taskmaster of science. The goal lies ahead, visible but like a shimmering mirage. The search goes on. January 13th, test 17, failure. February 10th, test 38, failure. February 20th, test 84, failure. Somewhere within that seething, noxious content of retorts and beakers, there lies the answer. And then, the 104th test. The mirage becomes tangible. 
the answer springs forth in all its dazzling simplicity, petroleum ether. Yippee! Oh. Petroleum ether, that's it. Oh, yes. The 104th Tesson, it works. Oh, Claire. Oh, Neil. If only Dr. Perot could be here now. He is. I heard him just a minute ago yelling, it's about time, you idiot, it's about time. <laughs> Look, Claire, this little bottle of lemon yellow oil. It couldn't be done, but we've done it. Oh, yes, Neil, we did. Oh, doesn't that make you feel sort of, uh... Or doesn't it? Oh, definitely. We're pretty good. In fact, we're marvelous. Oh, we certainly are. We're very remarkable we're people. We're geniuses. You don't suppose we're crazy, Claire? <laughs> good evening, Neil. Diane. You didn't think I knew, did you? Well, I've watched you two come here every night. Research, work. We've worked very hard, and that's all. You can't make any more out of it than that. You're in love with her, aren't you? Aren't you? With Claire? No, he isn't, Miss Merrick. I can understand your mistake, but... I assure you, this little bottle of oil was the sole reason that Mr. Wilson and I... Give me that. Diane. There. There's your experiment. That really is one which I doubt. Diane, please. Well, I... I think I'd better be going. All right, Claire. Don't worry about the extract. Now that we know the formula, we can prepare more. Oh, you can do that without me. The hardest part of the work's done. You really don't need me anymore. You mean you're not coming back? Well, I... You should be here. Half the credit belongs to you. Oh, no. Not to me. You've done something worthwhile, Neil. Keep on with your work. Don't ever stop. Remember what Professor Perot said. But, Claire, he I... He was right. Someday you will take his place. And what you've done here will make you famous. And not just in the university, in the world. And I'm very happy for you because you deserve it. Well, goodbye, Neil. Claire. What did she mean? Have you discovered something important? Well... Will it really make you famous? What, does it matter? I... I didn't know, dear. Maybe I was wrong. If this thing is as good as you say... Well, darling, don't be angry. I'm sorry. Honestly, I am. I'll never do anything like that again. I was... jealous. That's all. Forgive me? Yes. You don't sound like it. I forgive you. Love me? I love you. How much? Well, as much as I possibly can. The curtain falls in the first act of our play, The Magic Darkness, starring Richard Long as Neil Wilson. Now, an important message from our government. Choose the career that offers all five. The U.S. Army offers you these five keys to a successful future. One career of service. In the Army, you will be on a team with a tradition of patriotic service to the nation. Two, the right job for you. Scientific aptitude tests determine the job you're best suited for. Three, continuous training for planned advancement. Specialized training and educational courses prepare you for advancement. Then the Army's career plan assures you periodic promotions based on your skill and efficiency. Four, lifetime security. You, as an Army man, are guaranteed regular pay and sound retirement benefits. In sickness, your medical care is provided without cost, and your regular pay continues. Five, travel and recreation. In the Army, you'll enjoy the finest recreational facilities and opportunities for worldwide travel. And remember, you have 30 days vacation with pay each year. Yes, choose the career that offers all five. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Act Two of The Magic Darkness, starring Richard Long. Following her quarrel with Neil over Claire, Miss Diane Merrick saw fit to patch things up very quickly upon learning that her fiancé had made a remarkable scientific discovery. It took Diane a little time to charm Neil into discussing his experimental findings. But once they were learned, she lost little time in getting the news into the papers. As we return to the story, it is the following morning. Neil, upset at the story being released before he was ready, is calling on Diane at her home. Diane, I suppose you've seen the morning papers. Yes, isn't it wonderful? You gave that story to the press, didn't you? Certainly. You've discovered something important. 
And I'm going to see that you get recognition for it. But telling the papers my discovery is a success. Don't you realize what you've done? Father says it's the finest publicity the university's ever had. And I wouldn't be surprised if the trustees vote you a bonus for it. Look at this telegram from the State Medical Academy. If report's true, you have rendered medicine a great service. Sending committee to verify your claims. They'll be here in a week. Oh, then we'll have to move your equipment into the new laboratory building. We don't want them to think the university made you use that dismal old... Diane, building. can't you understand? That premature announcement has jeopardized everything. The extract hasn't been given one single test. But you know it will work. You said so. Knowing isn't enough. I must have proof. Well, then get the proof. This is your big chance. I said I'd make a success of you, and I will. I mean, just doing big things isn't what counts. It, it's knowing how to make the most of them. Perhaps, Diane, but... Well, Neil, you will meet the committee, won't you? For my sake. This means so much to me. Well... Please, Neil. Oh, a week doesn't give me much time, but I can try. Unfortunately, or should I say fortunately, science is no respecter of persons or of persons' emotions. Science is but the aggregate end results of proven facts. All too often have premature claims brought disaster and ridicule upon those who have made them. Men of scientific research are not interested in ideological ambitions. They care not a step for the ambitions of an enterprising fiancé. They are only interested in the truth that is revealed in the clear, bright light of knowledge. What Diane has done cannot be undone. Her motive was selfish. And now, as Neil Wilson stands on the brink of success or obscurity, the realization of Diana's motive sweeps over him. And being the scientist that he is, he examines his thoughts with the same careful scrutiny that he applies to the field of vision of his microscope. The committee has just assembled. President Merrick of the university is making his opening remarks. Neil stands alone, hesitant and inwardly trembling. Gentlemen, as president of the university, I want to welcome you to this demonstration and to say that we are proud of the work Mr. Wilson has been doing. We feel that we have found a worthy successor to Professor Perrault. Well, that's, that's very kind of you, Mr. Merrick. Mr. Wilson, you say you've been using chickens for your experiments? Uh, yes. Uh, as you all know, they, they suffer a disease similar in, in effect to a post-operative hemorrhage. You uh, refer to a diet deficiency of fats causing internal bleeding. Uh, exactly. Now, now, you've all examined the chickens. As you know, in, in normal course of events, they, they should die within 20 minutes. I, I shall give each a few drops of this extract. The bleeding will stop and, and they will return to normal health within, within 10 minutes. <clears throat> now, will you, will you hand me that dropper, please? Dead, every last one of them dead. Why, I don't understand it. Perhaps if I, if I repeat the experiment, give them a larger dosage. Well, surely you verified the dosage beforehand? Well, yes, but, but the conditions here may be... You mean you haven't tested it under every possible condition? Oh, I tried to, but, but the time was limited and... I'm sorry, gentlemen. Well, I appreciate your embarrassment, but I see absolutely no excuse for Wait, this. wait, let me explain. I wasn't prepared for this demonstration. Well, ridiculous. The newspaper announcement was premature. Let them go, Neil. The damage is done. Well, Neil, may I ask what you plan to do now? Do? Well, I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place. Retrace my steps and try it again and again and again until it works. And then a thousand times more until I find out why. Meanwhile, Mr. Merrick, I'll, I'll repair the damage I've done to your university by resigning. Well, as long as you feel like that, there's nothing I Apparently can... Apparently, you don't appreciate what Father has done for you. I hope you don't think you were promoted to head of the department because you were the best man for the job. Then he can get somebody else for the job. And just what am I supposed to do? Frankly, Diane, I don't give a hang. Neil! Would you like me to elaborate? Don't act as though it were all my fault. You're the one who failed. Yes, I failed. But believe me, it was worth it. Failure is a high price to pay for freedom but not too high when you're in danger of losing it completely. Neil, you... I've tried to be loyal to you, Diane. I've watched you undermine and ridicule everything I live for. But it's my turn to live my life. I have a lot of plans for myself. And the first is to get a deep breath of fresh air. Now, if you don't mind, I'll... I'll get my things out of the lab. Goodbye. Oh, 
Claire. I... I thought you'd gone. Well, I started to, Neil. But I saw in the paper that you were going to give a demonstration. Oh, Claire, I'm glad you're here. Well, what happened? It didn't work. It didn't work? Oh, but I don't understand. Why, I performed it exactly the same experiment here this afternoon. And they died. I know. No, no, they lived. Well, look at them. You... You gave them the extract? The same extract? Mm -hmm. The same extract I used? Well, where else would I get any? And they lived. But why? Why should it work here and not in the other laboratory? Why? Well, a change of temperature. No. No, it was the same. Or well, perhaps moving it? That wouldn't affect its power. We've moved it thousands of times. No, there... There must be something else. Well, what could have happened? I don't know. I don't know. We work for months in a dark, dingy laboratory and find the magic power to stop fatal bleeding. Then we move to a bright, clean laboratory, as spotless as a, a hospital operating room. And fail. Doesn't make sense unless... Unless... Unless what? Well, I was just thinking. The, the, the new laboratory, the light. The light? The sunlight. The sunlight may have killed it. Perhaps its power lies in the darkness. Of course, of course, that must be it. it it's sensitive to light. Oh, but you're not sure of that. I'll make sure. I'll give it every possible test. Claire, we'll have to begin all over again. But I have, I have just one chance to justify myself after today's little fiasco. If we can complete the test in a month, we'll, we'll go to New York, to the Pasteur Institute. I'm Benson, assistant to Dr. Girard, head of the Institute here. Oh, how do you do, sir? I'm sorry we're late, but our train was delayed. Oh, may I present Miss Webster? How do you do? How do you do? We've listed you with the speakers for this afternoon, Mr. Wilson. If that isn't rushing you too much. Oh, the sooner the better. To be honest, I'm, I'm scared stiff. <laughs> uh, in a couple of hours, you think? Uh, just about. Some very important discoveries going to be announced today. Uh, can we wait out here? Oh, certainly. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be back shortly. Oh, by the way, uh, Dr. Girard wanted to have a talk with you before you spoke. Uh, Claire. Claire, who speaks before me? Uh, Dr. James. James? The biochemist? Yes. According to this, he's announced... Announcing what? Oh, it's... Uh, it's not important. Well, let me see. No, I... Well, let me see. We'll announce the discovery of... Of... Oh, Neil. Vitamin K for facilitating the coagulation of blood. Well, that was a mistake. It was meant for you. No. No, it wasn't a mistake. There's a footnote. Reports have reached us on the simultaneous discovery of vitamin K at the Mayo Clinic, St. Louis University, and the University of Copenhagen. Well, are you ready to go? Where? Back. Weren't you going to speak? Why? I thought I was the first to discover it. But apparently I have nothing new to present. Nothing at all. Get a porter to take your bags. Neil, aren't you coming, too? No. I'm not going back, Claire. There's some things I have to well, do. Well, I'm not going without you. I wish you didn't have to. But you'll do what I think is best, I know. You said you have a job waiting for you in California. Take it. That's the only solution for us. Right now, my future consists of a lot of work and, and no money. But, Neil... No. It's my problem, and I'm going to lick it by myself. And when I do, I'll send for you. Goodbye, Claire. Aren't you going to wait until the train leaves? If you don't mind, it's, it's difficult enough as it is. Goodbye. Uh, will, you, will you make out my bill, please? I'm checking out. Yes, sir. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, I couldn't imagine what happened to you. You're due to speak in exactly an hour. Thanks for coming after me, Mr. Benson, but... I'm afraid my speech would be an anticlimax. Oh, you mean because of the other discoveries? Well, Dr. Girard has read your report, and your method of isolating vitamin K has greatly simplified the others. They, they still want to hear about it? In spite of all the other work that's been done? Oh, of course. That's why Dr. Girard wanted to have a talk with you before the program. You see, each method seems to have certain features and advantages not found in the others. Our work now is to combine them all, and we'd like you to accept a position with the Institute. Uh, Mr. Benson, wait here, please. I have to send a telegram. Miss Webster's on oh, the train yes, to... she isn't, Neil. Claire. It was Miss Webster who told me where I could find you. Oh, you couldn't get me on that train, Neil. I knew you had something to offer the Institute, or they wouldn't have put you on the list of speakers. I'll get a cab, folks. We'll have to hurry. You know, you were very unscientific, Neil, running away like that before you'd examined all the facts. 
You should have known better than anyone else that when two things have an affinity, well, it's very difficult to separate them. Difficult? Darling, it's impossible. Come on, let's get back to the Institute. Your one discovery I am going to announce first. The curtain comes down in the final act of our play, The Magic Darkness. In a moment, our star, Richard Long, will be back for a curtain call. First, here's Wendell Niles. Valuable professional assignments in the Army Medical Department are now available to a limited number of young doctors. In these positions, doctors have a chance to work closely with top specialists in the various fields of medicine and keep abreast of the newest developments and the finest modern medical equipment. In addition to regular pay and allowances, they receive $100 per month professional pay. For details, write to the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. Now, once again, our star and our producer. Congratulations, Richard Long, on a splendid performance. You were very convincing as a research chemist, and I'm glad you discovered the right girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. And can I tell our listeners that you'll be back in the theater for another fine performance? And how? Invitation accepted. Good. And while I'm saying thanks and goodbye, can you tell us a star for next week? Next week, Dick, and ladies and gentlemen, vivacious Peggy Ryan will be our star in a very bright and gay comedy romance titled Spring Fancy. I use the term romance advisedly. If one can use it in reference to a young lady's intent to steal the affections of half the student body of a military school. And of course, this isn't a comedy at all as far as the other girls in town are concerned who lose their boyfriends to Peggy and a broken-down jalopy her dad bought for her. In any event, don't miss Peggy Ryan and Spring Fancy. Until next week, then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Robert Riley Crutcher with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.